this, the idea of evolution, we have to be very um, clear about, didn't originate with Darwin. Um, there were um, several scientists who'd already been thinking about the idea of evolution, not least among them was Erasmus Darwin, um, Charles Darwin's grandfather. And another very famous um, person was Lamarck, um, a, a scientist who, if you read about him, you'll probably find he says a sort of a, a bit of a snigger about it because oh, well, Lamarck got it all wrong. Um, he made these, he, made, he had this peculiar idea that giraffes stretched their necks, and because they stretched their necks to reach leaves, they got longer and longer necks. Now it's. That, that, that was wrong. That's been, that's been completely disproved. But um, I don't think it has been completely disproved, and certainly the, the idea of it hasn't been completely disproved. But um, alongside the scientists who put forward the idea of the development of organisms, um, there were scientists who were dealing with, as I said, geology and um, paleontology, the study of fossils. And there was a man who was a contemporary of Darwin called Lyle, um, who very much believed from his work on the fossils. And Darwin had seen quite a lot of fossils and collected a lot of fossils on his voyage with the Beagle. Um, it was quite clear that there had been organisms inhabiting the earth which were no longer here, that, um, that had, had it changed. And, um, not everybody subscribed to the idea of change. There was a, a very famous paleontologist called Curvier who um, put forward the idea, well, yes, but they're not here anymore, but they died out in catastrophes like the flood. You know, presumably um, they were the ones who Noah <coughs> couldn't catch or, um, or, or were too big to go in the ark, I don't know, but anyway. Um, this, 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 uh, this idea that this idea that there were, there were animals that had inhabited the earth, but they had been killed off by um, major catastrophes, they were no longer here, but we could still see their remains. All of them having been specially created in the same way that all the animals that existed currently had been specially created as they were. In terms of paleontology, the evidence for evolution is really very strong. There are some, some chalk deposits which took about 10 million years to accumulate, that is um, sedimentary rock um, under the, underwater, under the sea or under lakes or whatever, um, and material deposits on the bottom, of silt deposits and more deposits and it builds up. And um, these rocks are 1,500 feet in depth, and it took 10 million years approximately for those rocks to be built up. And in about 500 feet of those 1,500, there are a series of small animals called sea urchins, um, and it's very clear that they change as you come upwards. The ones that are at the bottom, where the earlier deposits were, are more ancient than the newer ones. And they change as you come upwards. And the changes on this, in this particular example are not very great. Just some changes in the shape of the sea. You know what sea urchins are like, little spiky things. And ch changes in the shape of the shell, in the arrangement of the spines and so on. Very gradual. But that would, that would have taken something, um, something like four to five million years for these changes to have taken place. And as um, scientists point out, and certainly as Darwin pointed out, when you see the remains of organisms um, in the rocks, at particular depths in the rocks, relating to the time at which they lived, you see groups that were contemporary. Um, as one of the school textbooks puts it rather nicely, you don't tend to find Bren guns in caches of medieval um, muskets. You don't find things out of their out, out of their time. So this indicates that these organisms have developed. And one of the one of the famous examples from paleontology is the horse. You, you've probably heard of um, Eohippus, a very primitive horse about the size of a, um, a terrier, with um, legs that have got on three toes at the front and 
So three toes at the back and four at the front. And gradually, the fossils that are found, as they get more recent and more recent, the middle toe gets longer and the other toes begin to disappear until with the modern horse we find an animal which has got just one single toe. Um, that, I mean, that the hand of the horse goes, goes right up um, to its knee in, on, the fore, on the fore part of the horse with the hand bone and then the finger bones coming down to a, to a single hoof. And, and, and a, an adaptation which um, is exceptionally good for organisms which run, for an animal which runs fast, particularly on fairly firm ground. So Darwin had built up quite a lot of evidence in, in favour of evolution. And when he came home, he was able to study in another direction. And that was in the direction of the breeding of plants and animals. And as um, Engels points out in um, Dialectics of Nature, in England was an exceptionally good place to do that because breeding of animals and, plant, and plants in England, as he pointed out, was very much in advance, certainly he, he quotes it for comparison with Germany. And most of the, the advances had happened in the previous hundred years, so the evidence was really there um, and, and, and fairly ready to come by. And so what Darwin said was, um, okay, the animal breeder takes those features of an animal which, it, which he wants and tries to conserve them. Now this wouldn't work if every animal was completely identical. And you could look at a field of sheep and with an unpracticed non-farmer's eye, I might think all oh, those sheep were all the same, all the little woolly lambs, you know, they're all the same. But in fact, there are quite a lot of variations within um, a herd of sheep, within a herd of cattle, um, a lot of variations within, say, a field of wheat and so on. And so, what he said was that on the basis of these variations, the breeder can select what they want, breed from those, obtain future generations of animals or plants which have those favoured features and within the variations there select again and gradually um, and perhaps not so gradually quite big changes can be made and um, it is remarkable that say for example in, in, in dog breeding within a single species a species that can breed within itself you have such wide ranging forms as the Chihuahua on the one hand and the Great Dane or the Irish Wolfhound on the other. Um, much bigger differences than, than could be found in what are regarded as different species, what are different species. Much bigger, like the Chihuahua is much more different to an Irish Wolfhound, certainly in its general appearance, than say um, a uh, a coyote, a North American coyote and a wolf, or, or, or a dingo. Um, much, they are much similar, but they're, they're, they're distinct species. They don't interbreed 